Hey guys, it's Core Ross and welcome to Six News. So I'm back playing some more Rainbow Six Extraction and I'm uh, going to be able to show you and go over what I felt of it. And this was playing the hardest game mode with these two lovely gentlemen here. Links in the description below to their videos too. Make sure you go check them out and see what their opinion is on this game and see some different angles of the gameplay. But I want to run through what I thought. So, of course, the last time I played this, it was a press version, which meant it was set to the easiest difficulty because that is how you know, cooperative and campaign feed press stuff is. And this time they threw everything at us when it comes to difficulty. So in Rainbow Six Extraction, you're going to have a few different modes to play. So you'll have your standard, which ranges from easy, medium and hard. And the Rainbow Six Extraction website already indicates all the maps you're going to be able to play. And the full list of maps is New York which has three subzones, San Francisco, which again has three subzones, Alaska with three subzones, and Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, where the outbreak actually originated, and again, it has three subzones in it. So that means a total of 12 maps at launch, and these maps are a little bit bigger than Rainbow Six Siege maps. And that's gonna be your standard gameplay. But above that, you've got an extra layer of difficulty, which is a playlist that keeps bringing in different modifiers and brings up the difficulty. And then you've got the Maelstrom Protocol, which basically you can think in two different ways. It is the end game for Rainbow Six Extraction, and it is also effectively your ranked playlist as well. And this is where the game turns everything up to 11. So instead of having three sub maps, it has nine sub maps that you have to go through. And there's random modifiers, there's stuff that makes it just super difficult, but it is the same for a set period. So you go in, you try to put down the best score you can, and you get between bronze and diamond. And this playlist resets after a certain amount of time and becomes a new scenario with a new bunch of modifiers, new order, new objectives. So me and the guys, we jumped in and we played this. Now, be noted, we were recording the brand new season for Siege and edit up our brand new videos for Siege for the embargo time. So this was just before that. So we had to jump in with just a little bit of time that we had in order to play this and try it out. And we're also only allowed to show you the Maelstrom Protocol gameplay not the other stuff so i can't like do a run of you know easy medium and hard just to show you a comparison between all that and the assignment mode and the maelstrom mode it is just the maelstrom mode we're showing off today which is the hardest part of rainbow six extraction and of course a little disclaimer this is a work in progress version of the game that we're playing here and holy moly it was very difficult it was also a hell of a lot of fun so let me run you through the first couple of runs they went bad so first of all, our first objective was like tag these nests and we kept failing that over and over again. Um, but it was good we were able to actually proceed further and even if we failed that. However, it ended up being more of a bug. We had to be at a very precise angle to actually put our trackers on the nests. Once we figured that out, we were actually able to do that uh, objective. So that kind of slowed us down to begin with. But as you can see from the gameplay right now, we were able to move through that subzone very easily. But that was the first of nine subzones. The furthest we ever got was four, and uh, we were almost at five. But let's talk about that fourth subzone. So the first time we arrived here was a few runs earlier, and when we got there, it was a hostage rescue. And I was like, oh, I've done this before in the preview, and it was super easy. We might be able to do it very easy by grabbing the guy and just running him to the evac, getting him out, and then we run onto the airlock. I thought, we might have a chance. And uh, that was a bad idea because as soon as we grabbed him, the whole place just lit up with enemies and it went bad very, very quickly. But it was also awesome. It, was, it had just such an intensity and was great to play. Now, the next time we arrived back at this subzone in a future run, we came in with a plan. So we were going to clear out a path to the evac, get him in there, and then immediately hightail it to the airlock so we can get onto the next subzone. And it almost worked. It almost worked. So unfortunately, I got killed. Now, let me talk about the health in this game. So that's the brutality of it. It is hard to get your health back up. You can find health on the map in boxes. You can even bring healers along, but you'll notice when you spawn, you have 100 health. You can actually have a maximum of 200 at any given time. However, in the harder difficulties, if you find health boosts and boost your health up, it's temporary. And if you lose health, that is also a permanent loss of health too. Even if you get it up, it is again a temporary health boost. It'll slowly go down. 
and health is very hard to get a hold of in extraction. But also ammo management is very important too. You can easily run out of ammo and uh, at the end of doing objectives, we usually spend a little bit of time looking to see what boxes were actually on the map. And this is where things like what is actually given to you as information is very important that I didn't realize on our first bunch of runs. And then I looked at the menu and I noticed, oh, the menu actually tells us what boxes are currently on the sub map that we're playing on. So if you, you know, complete an objective, and you're like, oh, I'd love to find some ammo. You can just look at that actual menu and say, oh, yeah, there's ammo here or there's no ammo here or there's health or whatever you're needing. So you can be like, yeah, we'll go have a look and see if we can find it. And that's where operators like IQ are super important because you can use her device to actually detect these boxes around the map and help you to find supplies easier. But in the Maelstrom protocol, she wasn't playable because it's always going to be a selection of operators and that is different for every scenario. But anyway, back to that hostage rescue. So we cleared out a path to the helipad. We had a plan to grab them, get to the helipad and then either evac ourselves at that point or get to the next subzone and continue. However, our health was low and unfortunately I ended up actually dying. Now, the weird thing is, I'm in spectator this whole point at this point afterwards, but to me, and like I was literally saying this at the time, I am totally using this in my video because it was amazing. So, Robbie grabs the hostage and the both of them attempt to make it out and they're closing doors behind them and everything, trying to get this guy to what I call the coffin. It's the kind of evac pod. And they manage to get him into that pod, but then as they are trying, because they're, they're pretty sure it's going to go down very bad very quickly, so they try to evac themselves too, and uh, it doesn't go well, and they both end up dying. Now, the funny thing is, because I got downed earlier, they were able to pick me up and put me in the coffin, and that meant my character was actually safe, which is funny. So I actually got out alive from the um, the actual scenario, whereas their two actually lost their characters and we went off and played an easier mode to get them back as well later. But uh, it was just so much fun. And like I say, I was spectating at this point and just saying, I'm going to use this in my video because I was loving it. So that moves us on to the conclusion and what I think of this game, who's going to like it and where it's going to go. So. Three months ago, I played this for the first time. It was a press version, it was super easy, and I had no issue with it being easy because I knew it was for the press. And I enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty damn good. Now, coming into this one, I was much more apprehensive because I wasn't sure if I was still going to enjoy it. And recently, I played Bat for Blood, and it's a good game, but it's not for me. And like, whenever I'm watching a video for that game, There'll be people saying, oh, you, you need to use this certain car, this certain perk where you have like unlimited ammo. And I don't like that. I like having to manage my ammo. I like having to manage my health. I like that there's a lot of difficulties to it. And I like the fact that in extraction, you can be stealthy. It is a legit tactic. And sometimes you need to use it for some of the objectives. But I was worried that this harder mode would just simply be running and gunning and not really have any kind of tactic to it at all but I ended up really having a lot of fun. Now, I definitely worry about the amount of content and how quickly I'll actually get burnt out on it because, of course, you're basically doing the same thing over and over again, which, of course, you do in Siege too, but the enemy make it so variable because there's so many gadgets, so many different interactions, so many different positions people can be in and stuff like that. That means every time you play Siege, it always feels very different. I'm worried that the variation here in objectives and enemies will eventually run its course and I will get kind of bored of it. And if this actually ends up following the Siege formula and does seasons where we actually get new maps and new operators, then I'll be very happy because that just keeps that variation going longer and longer. So I'm a bit worried about content overall, but playing this and playing through just four of the nine sub maps with the different objectives and stuff, I had a lot of fun. There was a lot of variety. It was difficult. And be annoyed, remember, we only made it to the fourth sub map, and that was extraordinarily difficult. And every sub map gets more difficult. So we were not even halfway through this scenario. So it was going to progressively get harder. So getting diamond will actually be legitimately very difficult. And I love that. I think that's absolutely incredible to have that sort of difficulty. And I like that we jumped into this being able to only do the first couple of subzones and then manage to actually get halfway by six games. And I would just love to spend another six or 12 trying to get the higher and higher rank. It is definitely addictive. 
And this playlist on our preview build was in a seven day cycle. So you have seven days to try and get the best rank you can. You get rewarded for your ranks with cosmetics. And then when the playlist resets and it comes up with a new order of subzones, new objectives, and new modifiers, then you can jump back in and achieve another rank again. So it's constantly bringing you back in with new variety. So that to me is pretty damn cool. I like the fact that I could come in week after week and get completely different experiences with different modifiers for the enemy's difficulty, with different objectives. And of course, I don't just have to play the Maelstrom protocol. I've also got the assignments one, which were equally as hard and set scenarios every week too. And then of course, we've got the easier stuff. If you wanna go in for more casual play, you can jump into the more easy difficulty. And you do also have the VR training mode which is basically you jump in and you play, but there's no loss. So if one of your characters goes missing and stuff like that, you don't have to worry. So that's your super casual or just, you know, learning the game basically uh, mode. So yeah, I had a lot of fun. It was super difficult and super fun. And out of all the co-op games I've been playing recently, the top one has been Deep Rock Galactic. I think that game is absolutely incredible and the variety in it is just so good. And you can play tactics, gadgets, it's incredibly good but uh, i think this right now in my opinion is better than back for blood and hopefully we'll be close to deep rock galactic at launch but we'll have to see like i say the variety is the thing that i'm kind of worried about but we'll see how that plays out with seasons and additional content and if they support it long term i've got an assumption about you guys actually watching this video at home because i'm presuming that we're going to have a lot of hardcore siege players and a lot of past hardcore siege players who no longer play and we're also going to have a little bit of a subset of Outbreak players who jumped in the sea just to play Outbreak and never bothered with the multiplayer whatsoever. And we're gonna have a bit of both as well. And we're also gonna have a few different voices in the comments below as well. I think we'll see a lot of people just saying, why isn't this a separate mode within Rainbow Six Siege? Why is it a whole spin-off? And I think this game being a spin-off is actually its biggest advantage. They can do whatever the hell they want with it. And from what I have seen, it's enjoyable. And it's my kind of thing. I think for most Siege players who are hardcore multiplayer, you're not gonna be too fussed by this. And you might well have used it if it was a spin-off mode in Siege and you're not gonna buy a separate game to actually play it. But the people who played Outbreak and really enjoyed it, I think there's gonna be a large chunk of you that are going to absolutely love Extraction. And I definitely think you're gonna spend a lot of time playing it. And for me, I have been super, super hungry to get hold of a game that has Rainbow Six Siege's gunplay but in a cooperative setting and it's good to finally get that. Now, of course, it's not what I would pick. I would have gone counter-terrorism with some sort of silly political story, but this to me is the closest I can get right now and I think it, I think it's good. Like, I actually do really think it's good and I enjoy it and I'm looking forward to jumping in with the full game, hopefully in January if there is no more delays. But anyway, guys, let me know what you think of this and like I say, there's a link in the description for the gameplay of the other guys that were in my squad. So you can go check them out and see their perspective and their opinion on what they thought of the game as well. But anyway guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.
triangulation. Setting time out in Good. Make your way to the next station.